and everything the opponent does, it's a card for you. So it pretty basically, your opponent is forced to 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 allow you to do everything you everything you want. So uh, a news in, the, in the, uh, Tristan Pult win the, the standard main event. Yes. <laughs> it's the third Italian uh, that lost the loses in the finals. So Tristan Poults wins the standard main event. Uh, okay, regarding this vintage matchup, I I gotta be honest with you. I think the edge is with Lopez. I mean, Lopez definitely has an edge because of his Mystic Remorse, because of his Cavern of Souls, because of all this one of that he has in his deck that can actually overcome, you know, Rocket the more, more standard list. Um, also, the only the only problem is Rocket is actually on the play because he ended up second in the Swiss, um, which is really good for him. I mean, it would be really, you know, even harder to face a Mystic Remora on the draw. Yeah, the, the thing that I can I can tell that the, uh, the, the list of uh, Jose Antonio he lacks of removal for creatures because he's got only one sword plosher. He, 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 he's not, he's not, he, he got two snapcasters made for, for this sword plosher. So if uh, 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 Marco will be able to put one of his Delver of Secrets, Young Pyromancer, or Monastery Mentor in play quickly, it could be a problem for Jose Antonio to, to, rec to, 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 to find an answer to it because basically he's got a very clean control deck based on car in engine uh, card engine drawing but is 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 not he doesn't have lighting bolts he doesn't mm -hmm. have sword plushers he doesn't have uh, many blocks for for the creatures so uh, i think the marco in this play he's got to play it like an aggro deck if he if he tries to control himself he will lose because jose antonio he's got plenty of draw engine and control spells yeah, definitely Rocchetti is the beat down in this matchup. Uh, also looking at um, Jose Antonio's sideboard, I mean, he doesn't have any any more removals in there. I mean, he only has a couple of Swords of Polishers and a couple of Sudden Shocks. Uh, so definitely Rocchetti has to be on the aggressor side and try to drop his threat as quick as he can and try to develop a board, especially because there's no mass removals in the format. I mean, he doesn't play cards like Balance, he doesn't play cards like Pyroclasm, he doesn't play cards like that, so there's no way he can actually uh, swipe a board after the board is full of tokens. Yeah, I mean, if if he, if he facing if he's facing a monastery mentor himself, uh, I don't think he can. Uh, I mean, otherwise he can. The only option he got is playing his own monastery mentor and face the monastery mentor of the opponent. So basically, if Rocchetti will start aggressive with a Delvero secret or so on. It will not be easy for Lopez. So Rocchetti, so Rocchetti plays uh, a Fleshland and no big oh, and the Library of Alexandria. Yeah, as we predicted, Jose Antonio is playing the perfect control, and the perfect control starts the game with Library of Alexandria in play. <laughs> and the Black. Yeah, I mean, um, with this kind of hand. Uh, one thing that I think it's lacking in his um, in his um, main deck is basically uh, Tolarian Academy. I mean, normally in decks that like to play Mystic Remora, you do like a Tolarian Academy, yeah. especially if you start with a few Moxes. I mean, it can help you out keeping you know the upkeep um, of the Remora Definitely. and just carrying on. So he, he decided to play Cavern of Souls, uh, Library of Alexandria, a few other know. nice lands, but it does not have access to uh, Tolarian Academy. I don't understand this choice. He's all, he always can say that he doesn't play the black. So he doesn't have the demonic tutor for that. So, I mean, but I would definitely play Tolarian Academy in a deck that plays Mystic Kramer and, he, and that he plays the full set of Moxes, the Mana Crypt, the Soaring, Black Cloudus. So it's a choice, but okay, we have to say the binding top. We have seen a wear tier uh, from Rocchetti trying to get rid of the Black Lotus. Uh, Lopez, in response, just cracked the Lotus and plays Ancestral Recall. Yeah, Lopez is he's got a fantastic hand with two force of will. Uh, very, he's very quiet because he knows he's got a monster hand. The problem with uh, 
with this play now is that actually if you know is into library so Rocchetti has a mental misstep uh, Lopez has a mental misstep on his own Rocchetti has got a second mental misstep so basically he's risking in order to misdirection misdirection so in order to um, you know let the ancestor resolve he is actually risking to get out of the library force of will by Lopez. So obviously now he's risking. Like is, if Rocchetti has a force of will, I mean he's basically done. Not a counter is on chest for itself. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, Lopez here. Uh, going out of library if the ancestral recall doesn't resolve Rocchetti have to counter back the ancestral with his own also um Rocchetti has a gash. This is actually a quite you know a quite a weird play from Rocchetti because he tried to um, he tried to counter to misdirect the ancestral recall. Now he's trying to uh, mental misstep the ancestral. I Lopez has got a second mental misstep, and Rocchetti is going to be left with a gush, which he could have actually pitched the gush instead of a mental misstep in order to have two mental missteps and misdirection. Yeah. Yeah. Not a big play here by Rocchetti. Yeah, definitely not a big play. I mean, he, he, he preferred to have his gush instead of just countering the assessor recall and getting uh, Lopez totally out of uh, library reach. Yeah. I would have, obviously, I would have also start with a mental misstep before trying the misdirection. I would have played mental misstep on the ancestral recall and then when uh, Lopez forces back misdirection on the ancestral. Because you know that he doesn't play Ancestral Recall without a protection, probably. Yeah, he's definitely not going to play Ancestral Recall in the dark. Also, um, I mean, in this situation, Rocchetti is left with a gush. Mm. So, it, you know, it's not, it's not a big change. I mean, Lopez already drew a few ex uh, one extra card from library. Now um, he has a second. Now he's, he's got a second one. I mean, it, there's no coming back from here. No. He, he, he could have just pitched the, f uh, the gush in the first place. Uh, using his um, his second mental misstep yeah. as a backup to counter ancestral recall, getting Lopez out of the reach of library yeah. and trying to play a fair game against yeah. him. Now is a very he's now it's one sided. Now it's a totally unfair yeah, game. Yeah, totally unfair game. Now he's playing a soaring and he's developing mana. He's playing a sensei top, and now for Rocchetti it will be practically impossible to recover. He's got six cards. He's got. He actually uh, got five cards. I mean, he by playing go. all these permanents, he actually got out of library. O only for a second, because obviously he can... He can twitch over the top. He can twitch to the top if he yeah, wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just made it this choice to switch with the top and, and draw with the card he wants. Now Rocchetti, with a, with a Patrick Sile, I think, with an island and a gash. Oh, no, Rocchetti definitely out of this match. And he knows. He's, he's got to force a gash play trying to find the creature to it's it's got to do something now basically and it and it does yeah if if you kept your gush there you really want to use your gush and try and do something otherwise you might as well just kept the mental mistake yeah he draws into a lightning bolt and a mox nothing useful yeah definitely not not what you want that the difference between the two decks is that basically i mean it's hard to say that in a vint about a vintage deck, but Rocchetti's power level is definitely, you know, less powerful than Lopez's cards. Yep. I mean, look, Rocchetti's playing cards like Lightning Bolt, like Path to Exile. They're, they're cheap and easy spot removals, but Lopez doesn't play any of these cards. So basically, any any single draw from Lopez, yep. you know, it, it's much better card quality than cards like Bolt and Path to Exile. Yeah. As we previewed, he switched the Sensei to draw the seventh card and draw for the library. Now he proposes Cavern of Soul, probably a Monastery Mentor. That will practically... <sighs> now Rocketti has a chosen Lightning Bolt, but... <sighs> I mean, now Rocketti not in a good shape. Absolutely not in a good shape. Yeah, also Lopez is absolutely not in a rush to do anything. No. I mean, he does have a library, he does have a second monastery mentor, he does have source of closure eventually if Rocchetti tries to, you know, play a fast creature. So he's absolutely not in a rush to do anything. 
Now what closure? I have a bolt of Rocchetti. He found the second bolt that he dropped. He top deck the second bolt, so he, he will be able to. But so now the only thing with the, with Lopez, and if, if he got five cards, so we'll, we will be able to use the library unless he top decks something. But I think he drew he drew into a gash. So yeah, I mean the the way Lopez is playing his library, I think it's a bit aggressive. Another I mean, monastery. He's actually he's actually playing, um, you know, he's playing in, in a very aggressive fashion. I mean, he's not he's using his library to draw as many cards as he could. No. Which, to be honest, I don't like. I mean, if you if you've got library, you might as well just keep your seven cards in hand. You're not in a hurry. Your opponent is playing a tempo deck. You might as well just go for the biggest card advantage you can. Yeah. Now Rocchetti with a path to exile on the second monastery mentor. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I really don't like uh, Lopez going out of library without 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 threats. By yeah, Rocchetti. exactly. I mean, you're in complete you're, control. You're in complete control. You're on an empty board. You're rushing things. Uh, now, I mean, you could have just gone into libraries uh, one more time, draw one more card. You don't have to play your monastery mentor as soon as you can, especially if you're facing a deck with cheap spot removals. Yeah. Also, his deck only plays three mentors, so he only has one mentor left in his deck. Yeah. You can run out. Yeah, now he's missed that. For example, now he's misdirecting the path to exile onto the token, which is fair enough. I mean, he will get a basic land. Uh, he will just get rid of the token, but like, he's way out of library now, and he also has to draw. He has to draw like uh, an island in order to get gush in order to get back into. Yeah. I mean, he's got the island. He's got the gush. He can get back into library, but like, that that's just something that happened. Yeah. He didn't the actually is, plan to do so. Uh, the thing is that misdirection, misdirecting the, uh, on, the, on the other token, uh, it, it, it will be able to, I mean, to, 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 to find the second island to be able to play the gash. And with the gash, I think he can come back into the library with the two lands in the end. So now Rocchetti, he's got, he's got an ancestral recall now. He actually just stopped back the accessory call. Can he get back into the game? So now, yeah, he takes a blue mana and gashes in response to the accessory call. And now he's got, he got two cards. He's got an archery call. Uh, a mana leak, a monastery mentor. I so think now basically, Rocchetti can actually resolve the, the accessory recall. Yeah. And this all happened because. Because Lopez rushed into things. I mean, he rushed into... He didn't draw a card from library. He rushed into playing a mentor. He, he actually found, you know, he realized that he only has a mentor left in the deck. So, he, he, you know, he wanted to protect his mentor. He didn't realize that, you know, Rocchetti can actually draw into cards like an Assassin's Recall and try to uh, get back into the game. It's it, yeah, it's not, it's not really happening, really. But, you know, he's given Rocchetti some out. Uh, Lopez is in a strong advantage. But is he tried to complicate himself the life uh, because uh, it, it forced the play as he as he have to close as he have to to rush. I don't know why, but anyways, he, probably he knows that he plays as a, a quite slow deck, and he want he doesn't want to to have uh, time issues probably, and he wanted to close this match in which is clearly the favorite quick so now with the top others other spell other other monastery mentor so now he's attacking for uh, I think uh, uh, six or seven damages Maybe this, maybe seven damages. Nine damages because you play seven seven. So this is all two two damage. Yeah. Anyways, he's got, he, he, he puts Rocchetti one 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 turn from from the dead. So it goes to eight. Now we can with the Delver reveal some uh, card. Uh, he doesn't reveal nothing and loses. Uh, I mean. 
Uh, Honestly, if you see like um, a control mirror or aggro control against control, and the control deck is on the draw and starts the game with library, I have not seen many games in which you know yeah. the, the the library player probably never loses, yeah. unless you can actually get him out of library reach. And to be honest, Rocketti hasn't done much to get him out of the library reach. Lopez has done it all by himself. Yeah. Looking at the cyborg, Rocketti could come in with two Pure Blast, one other wear and tear if you want. He, he's got he's got a new rod, I don't know. He, uh, maybe he's got a new rod for the Sensei Divine Utopia he can put into play. He's got free contain priest. He doesn't have revolutionary card, obviously. Instead, Alasho Lopez he's got two sword to closure, maybe he put in uh, maybe also uh, obviously uh, a pure blast. And I think he also he will also sudden play shock. sudden shock. Yeah. I mean, because sudden shock is a very good uh, answer to a monastery <laughs> If I'm a Rocketti, I didn't play Van Delver because playing Van Delver yeah actually leads to the fact that you are playing a creature based deck. Yeah, uh, because he no he probably knows that he can recover this game. When he when he drew into two force of will and a Delver. Yeah, there's no coming back from that. I mean, Lopez is facing a deck which basically plays wear tier. It plays lightning bolts. It plays uh, path to exile. Uh, plays misdirection and mental misstep. It could be anything. It really could be a control deck. You but don't have. You do Delver. not have to show him that Delver. Yeah. So showing the Delver for me was not a, a big deal. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the meta game breakdown for the vintage tournament. The most played deck uh, with 11 is Jace Control, uh, followed by Gush Mentor with 9, uh, Bugfish with 9, uh, Welder Mud, or just Mud, uh, with 8, and then we've got 7 Monastery and 5 Oath, and that's pretty much it. So let's say that at least. 16 decks played Monastery, five of them are in the top eight. Also, yeah, but probably the Gash Control. The, 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 the Jace Control, control play maybe monastery. played a few Monastery, plus other decks probably played Monastery. Like yeah. we have seen before, um, um, yeah. Biava with his Accumulated Knowledge deck playing a couple of Monasteries here and there. So I would say pretty much every blue deck yeah. was playing Monastery. Yeah, yeah. Also, the uh, the artifact decks only eight of them, only eight artifact decks. One tesserator. Um, uh, yeah, a few, a few, a few other here and there, but like total stacks, just eight. And we've got two of them in the top eight. Yeah, these stacks is 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 a is a is a is a staple of the. Yeah, deck. I think stacks is normally like one probably the deck with the best winning percentage in vintage because yeah, there's not many stacks played in a tournament but they always seem to do really well as i told you before the tournament before we what we uh, losing um, looking at the, this deck breakdown there are only two manaless secret uh, or dredge because as i told you even for even with the unspoiler the price no one plays more of this deck because it's not easy to play because it's uh, it's got issues with uh, cyborg uh, choice and it is basically a coin flip every game so another interesting thing to watch is that only three doomsday and one show and tell deck showed up uh, telling that probably the combo deck in vintage are facing their their very la their very uh, i mean uh, a, a bigger a bigger moment of crisis I think for the Flusterstorm. Yeah, the um, the print of Flusterstorm basically killed a lot. Killed a lot of storm. I mean, it killed the storm deck. It killed the uh, combo decks in general. And everything is moving towards a more creature-based uh, vintage, uh, a format in which you're not, you know, you're not ashamed of playing lightning bolts. Yeah, and also you are also uh, the control decks are very strong against. Uh, the combo decks and also the artifact decks for the combo decks are quite impossible now. Well, we'll see that Lopez is definitely going to mulligan to six as, as he's got a no land hand. Uh, well, Rocketti has got a couple of, couple, couple of Force of Will. Uh, he's got a Duck Faden. Faden. Uh, That's a time a walk and a path to exile. It does have no aggression at all. And, and he, he, got he only, only has one, one fetch land. I mean, 
If I'm Rocchetti at this time, I Amaligan. definitely Maligan this hand. Maligan this hand. No, he keeps it. He actually keeps this hand. On the play. On the play. This is. Uh, I'll be honest with you. This is a terrible keep from Rocchetti. I mean, he's he's keeping with one fetch land, active no. active force of will. No ponder. And no ponder. No brainstorm. No delver. No quick. No, no, no quick threats. Uh, I mean, he's basically just committed to draw more lands. Yeah. Definitely not agree. This is a hand you keep against a combo deck. This, yeah, this hand you keep against an aggro control deck because you got or a bolt, an uh, a, a path to exile. I mean, on on the play, honestly, like if you only have one one land, your deck is you not is not that mana hungry. But like, let's face it, if you fetch I for red, if you if you fetch for red, you're gonna play the bolt. You're not gonna play the path to exile. Also, like against some decks, you do want to fetch for a basic anyway. So not not in not, not in this case, but like. If Lopez finds a, a decent hand, like any decent hand, he's definitely the favorite here. Bah, he's got Ancestral Recall. I mean, he's got this, hand, this hand is quite light, only relying on Ancestral Recall. But like, if Rocchetti fails to draw another Moxie for Lopez, but now he's got three Moxies, he's got a Fluid of Strength, and Rocchetti now he's got to draw a land. Otherwise, ah, he passes the turn. I mean, we well, see the we see we see the lack of action yeah. in here. Also, like Lopez, Lopez is 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 in absolutely no rush to do anything. Yeah, this time for true. It is it. He will be able. He's to dropping a few moxes uh, w instead of keeping them. Don't agree. Uh, yeah. So Rocchetti found a preordain, so he's probably gonna play the preordain. But honestly, yeah. I mean, he got lucky. Here he just got lucky here to draw your name. But I mean, if he if he fails to draw a land here, it's pretty much done. Yeah, he he, he kept a terrible. Hand. He just kept a terrible hand. You, he, uh, I mean, in a, he knows that Lopez plays a strong control deck, and in a, we against the control deck, you have or an aggression, or a, uh, a plan of. Taking control of the match, you cannot rely on end. We only with counters. Maybe Lopez. He let's resolve a preordain. Uh, Rocchetti wow. doesn't find the line. So now Rocchetti is in trouble because basically he found two useful cards. He has to put them both on the bottom. Yeah. And he draws a land. Yeah, got lucky there. He got lucky there because otherwise he get to discard. Next turn he can play a time walk and try maybe find another land. Maybe Rocchetti can come out of his situation. Also because Lopez has got a known a no doing another land for Rocchetti. Now he's definitely out. Now he can actually drop Duck Faden if he wants to. He can he can prop drop Duck Faden and protect him. I mean, if I'm Rocchetti here, I'll try to do something. I mean, your opponent is not doing anything. You're not doing anything. In the long game, you're probably going to lose. Yeah. He probably fears a mana drain or something. But anyways, there's nothing we can... Uh, he hypnotizes that fade, as we said. Probably we'll get Ancestral Recall in response. Yeah. Now Rocchetti, he's got to force a will... I mean, you're facing an opponent with just manas, nothing else, and, and very low on cards in hand. I mean, at this moment in time, you probably want to win your um, counter war on Duck Faden, but you're not going to let that ancestral recall resolve. The problem is, if, if Lopez holds a misdirection in hand and you force a will the ancestral, you can misdirect the force a will on your Duck Faden. That would be very bad. That would be absolutely terrible. Yeah, now he's thinking. He also will on the other duck yeah, fade, and he's, he's got in a. Yeah, yeah, this is obviously. I will. I will. I will do the same. So now double fetch from Lopez, with probably a drone. Uh, I mean, uh, one of his. He counter, probably has cards like uh, uh, mana leak or mindbreak trap or something like that. He's got the, the thing with Rocchetti though, it does have a second force of will. It does have a time walk to pitch, so it's not in a terrible yeah, shape anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, he has a second force of will and a time warp to pitch. Problem is that he will remain without cards 
and able to do the draw to this card two from Duck Faden is the mind break trap. Yeah, the mind break trap. He exiles all these spells. He pays mind break trap. So Rocketti now forced to do another force will. Yeah. Pitching the time work. To be honest with you, I mean, Rocketti got rewarded, but I mean, he just kept a terrible hand. Let's face it. And Lopez had a weak mulligan to six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If Lopez can, uh, he get, uh, I think now Rocketti, he can steal a mox from Lopez. I don't think he'll do it. Yeah, he probably just gonna draw two and yeah. cycle and cycle uh, mm -hmm. the his bolt and, the and path path to exile. Yeah. Away. I will do the same. So he draws two, and he founds another land, and he discards the land. He discards yeah. both lands. Two so lands. He has a bolt and a path to exile. Yeah. But now it's, ba now it's basically naked. I mean, it does have the advantage of, uh, it does have the advantage of a Dark Faden, which is obviously gonna net him some good card advantage. But um, I mean, a decent card selection. But I mean, Lopez is, he's got five mana. He's got three cards in hand. If you can come back from here. He found the Pyromancer now. It is a pretty good card. Because he gives him a board state, he gives him a possibility to maximize his bolt and his path to exile. Now before obviously before playing it, he wants to do plus two, mira minus two. He found the land and a murdering. Well at this at this moment in time now, you probably just discard uh, your path to exile and bolt, uh, play a land. Fetch land and, and stay cool and, 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 and stay with the mana drain and just play your uh, pyromancer and stay open with mana yeah. drain. Absolutely. Here we have a mox and a cavern of soul, maybe. Yeah, he definitely has a mox, a uh, cavern of soul, and I think it's another mox. Yeah, mox. yeah it seems completely fluid for Lopez. Yeah. Complete yes. fluid for Lopez. What's the ultimate of that fade? Uh, now is the real possibility for uh, Rocchetti to arrive to the ultimate of Duck Vaden. Now Rocchetti is deciding. I agree with David. I will. I will definitely discard the path to exile, discard the bolt, and keeping the pyromancer with a drain co covering him. I would also fetch before um, playing the pyromancer, yeah. just in case. He decided to well, discard the Pyromancer. I will absolutely keep the Pyromancer. Yeah, he decides to just hold tight to his Bolt Path to Exile and Bolt. Yeah, maybe maybe one he wants ar to arrive to the ultimate of Dark Fate. I mean, this is actually the opposite situ situation of Lopez before. I mean, it, it really looks like those players they, you know, they they're not really seeing their role in this matchup. I mean, Lopez is the control deck, so. He's, no, he's in absolutely no rush to do anything. Yeah. Well, Rocchetti is the aggressor. I mean, Rocchetti now is found the force. He, he, is, the, he is the aggressor. So, so he has to, you know, try and play everything as 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 quickly as he can. But obviously, like Lopez's card qu card quality is much higher than his. So, at six, uh, Dark Faden, you get an ember whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents. Gain control of those permanents. That will be terribly good. Even if the spell that targets of Rocchetti are bolts and path to exile, so yeah. it's not easy to. So now finally he discards his bolt and path to exile, but but now with no pyromancer in play, I mean it doesn't it does not have a clear a clear path to victory. The thing is that maybe Rocchetti thought that Lopez is full of removal for creatures. For that reason, he didn't play the pyromancer in my opinion. He thinks he, he's got five cards in hand, he's doing nothing, probably he's got removals for creatures. Yeah, it's absolutely possible. I mean, still, I don't understand why you would keep Bolt and Pax to, Path to Exile, in which you have multiple copies of those cards, and you still you still would have been able to be open with uh, Mana Drain. Yeah. Anyways, now, with the, that Duck Fade is going to seven, uh, awarding... Uh, uh, Roberto, uh, Marco, sorry, the possibility the next turn to make the ultimate, even if it's not a, a big ultimate, 
Uh, now he's discarding Adalbert. <laughs> I mean, it really seems like he doesn't he, want. He is giving Lopez too much time. Yeah, I would put in a creature. I mean, with this fact that he discards Adalbert, it means that he, if he thinks that Lopez is full of removal for creatures, now Rocchetti also in the treasure cruise. Drawing him three cards, leaving obviously the removals for Snapcaster Mages. Obviously now Rocchetti He's got the you know, is is way in the driver's seat. And honestly this is very surprising considering the terrible the terrible handicap. Yeah. A one lander with no manipulation had to draw into a runner runner land just to play his first spell, which was you know now a dark fader. Yeah. Now ponder into a land, he finds also the ancestral recall. Uh, he finds another pond, he's got plenty of counter, he's got two force wheel, he's got a flaster storm. What he doesn't have is, um, you know, enough mana to actually play a few things. Like, he wants to start playing his Monastery Mentor when, he, when he's got, like, at least, like, four or five mana in order to play uh, Fluster Storm backup uh, or Force of Will backup. He also has he also has a Delver. I mean he might as well just play a Delver. Yeah, um he definitely give up give up the aggression plan. He wants to wait for the monastery mentor and kill uh Lopez with a monastery mentor protecting him. Uh, Lopez is in a terrible flood. Now he probably found a mentor. Yeah. It's pretty good for, for Lopez because obviously with the Cavern of Soul that we were mentioning before, he, he, can, he, can, now, actually, he can actually resolve the Monastery Mentor, which is a huge advantage because now if he, you know, if Rocketti tries to um, kill the Mentor, because there's Cavern of Soul. Uh, now Rocketti facing the, fa the problem that he's got he gets pretty, pretty, uh, and also pre pretty full of counters. He's got his own monastery mentor. No, but I mean, he's got he's got definitely like seven cards in hand, double force of will. He just drew ancestral recall freshly, but like he is back, yeah. like he's back against the wall against a uh, monastery mentor and two tokens. But Marco is can he can put in play his own monastery mentor. Yeah, he could just play monastery mentor, having an ancestral recall backup. Uh, on the attack from Lopez. Problem is, like, if Lopez dr just throws a couple of spells, he can, you know, he can just pump his creatures and win a couple of attacks. Yeah. Now, Marco, we have a possibility to make the ultimate of Duck Faden or drawing two, discarding two. He, disca he decides to draw two, discard two, another Delver, we probably will go in with Graveyard. Yeah, Marco is, is sh sure that. Lopez is full of uh, small to plosher, I think. <laughs> At this moment in time, he probably just dump uh, a couple of, yeah, that, uh, dump a Delver and a Mana Drain, uh, fetch away and drop a Monastery Mentor uh, and just say go. Mm -hmm. During during Lopez's turn, you probably just try to Ancestor Recall, fight a Counter War to get a couple of tokens, pump them up with Prowess. In just in case well, Lopez attacks. Yeah. And then you try again in your turn to just win the game quickly, which you should have done, you know, before. from just before. Yeah, just way before. Now, uh, anyway, uh, the plan of Rocchetti is not a, is not a bad plan because he's a, in a huge advantage. I mean, he's got seven cards in hand. I mean, <laughs> he's he's got, he should be able to come back from this. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. He probably now putting him in the monastery and passing the turn to have. Uh, uh, to have a possibility of doing ancestral recall in response to whatever Lopez will do to put his own counter and he pumps him pumping his counter. And Marco now, three two force of will, a preordain and ancestral recall. Mm, a preordain now. 
He wants to find the land he didn't drop this turn. But if he, if he didn't find, it will be a big mistake if he didn't find the land. Because... I think he found a gush. Even a gush is it actually, is good. Okay. It's actually yeah. okay, because he can just gush main deck, yeah. main phase, and then just play his land again. And stay open with the ancestral record. If he has some big play by Lopez, he doesn't know that Lopez get only lands in his hand. Yeah, as we told you, he plays Gash. He'll have a, he, he, he have an, the total, uh, the absolute necessity to drop a land in play, to play the ancestral call or whatever. Anyways, now he's got also a light in ball. He can, you can bolt away now the mentor. Yeah, he's got a he's got a lightning bolt. Uh uh which decks are we to pay off uh the decks are Neil's team against the Sanchez Pedro uh, Rodrigo Togores against Tomas Mar, Marco Rocchetti against Alasio Lopez, and Joachim Schielde against Musar Antonio. The decks in the top eight are five Monastery Mentor controls in different choices, one with Dark Vader, one with Jace, one more controlling deck, um, two Mud, and one four Color Fish. Let's see now Lopez top deck the uh, Monastery uh, a Mystic Remora. I think he missed the trigger, right? Yeah, the trigger in response, the ancestral recall over Rocchetti, as we previewed. I think he missed the, tri the soldier trigger. Yeah, probably he put, him, he put into, a, in the, into a stack the soldier trigger. Instead, a misdirection of the ancestral recall. Obviously, will be forced by Rocchetti. He, he got, he, but Lopez has got two more soldiers. Force a will by Rocchetti. Also, Rocchetti, another soldier. And. <laughs> yeah, Rocket is thinking whether to force a will the Raymar. Force a will of Raymar too. Now Rocchetti. Now Rocchetti with a clear advantage on the board. Uh, and Lopez. Uh, he Lopez played two spells. Rocchetti played three spells. So the, the soldiers of Rocchetti are bigger than the one of Lopez. And yet, pass the turn. And now Rocchetti. Uh, yeah, Rocchetti with five soldiers, Lopez with four soldiers. I mean, Rocchetti <laughs> could just. Does he have any spells he can play just to, you know, attack now? Yeah. Yeah, Rocchetti can also ultimate, can also. I mean, can do a lot of things. He's mm -hmm. in complete control of the game now. He does the ultimate of Duck Faden. Maybe we can also think to team trick. There's no chance. He's got the emblem of Duck Faden. <laughs> Lopez is searching in. He's fetching in his. In his Great. <laughs> yeah. 
fine. <laughs> Very so kind no, of Lopez. There is no, no chance for Lopez. No, it's not kind. No chance to recover from that. Zulketi's got many things in Six hand. Card, I think. Yes, Alfo. So I think there was. Um, I mean, f uh, sixteen. No, seven mentors. Okay, there was seven monastery decks, uh, nine gash mentor decks, and this is just sixteen decks absolutely focused on mentors. Plus, there's eleven Jace control decks, which probably played a few mentors here and there. Um, a few. There's one white blue monastery deck. I mean. There's plenty of monastery. Like the, the, the card itself, monastery was all over the, you know, yeah. all over the, the room. Dominated the room or today the monastery mentor is the card definitely the card of the day for the vintage tournament today. Uh, now, uh, what's gonna happen? That Nils team and Sanchez Pedro are on, are on one one draw for the moment. Rodrigo Togores win the first against Tomas Mar. And uh, Joachim Schialde win the first against Antonio Muzarra. So our Italian players are risking the, the elimination. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, okay, Rocchetti wins the second one. He kept a very, very bad end. He, he, he only got one land in a, one land. He, he, he was on the play. He doesn't have brainstorm, ponder, ancestral recall. He doesn't have nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm absolutely shocked about uh, the hand rocket he kept. To, to be honest with you, it was such an easy mulligan in the matchup. Such an easy mulligan in general against probably every deck. Um, probably every deck he would have just shipped the cards back and draw six. Um, on the other hand, though, Lopez in the first game, you know, he didn't actually take all the advantage he could from Library of Alexandria. So, yeah. we, 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 you know, we just saw, you know, a few plays here and there. Game 1, Lopez just didn't play it perfectly with Library, still won. Um, Rocchetti with a terrible keeping game 2, you know, still managed to win the game. Yeah. But le le let's be honest, I mean, these two decks are actually forgiving a lot of mistakes from the players. Yeah, uh, I think that the error of Lopez was quite uh, uh, incidental. I mean, he get out of the library to pretty basi basically win the game in two turns. Most, the big error for me is from rocketing game one to not, uh, to use uh, this, his mental misstep to pitch the misdirection instead of keeping it and not pitching the gash to the misdirection. And then Rocchetti kept a terrible end. He deserved to lose this game, but instead he won. Uh, I think I can do uh, in the top eight. We are three. Sp we are three Spanish players that com confirm themselves as uh, 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 good vintage players. We always had, always seen Spanish player doing good in vintage. Uh, then Neil team is from Denmark. Uh, Tomas Mar is for Czech Republic. With two Italians, Marco Rocchetti and Antonio Musarra, and the Norwegian uh, Joachim Skjolde. So basically, what is happening now is that uh, Spanish. Sì. Ha detto Giulio se vogliamo, cioè se vogliamo alla finale del draft sotto le telecamere, chi lo risponde? No, no, no. Uh, uh, Vigli di aspettare un quarto d'ora che finiamo questa e poi la facciamo. Eh, tardi, raga. Eh, allora, fagliela fare. Okay. Uh, yeah, Norway. Uh, I mean, now Lopez will start. I think that uh, I still think that the deck of Alasio Lopez is better than the deck of Marco. But also, his choice of Maligarin is much better. Yeah, but but uh, about Lopez, the thing is that Lopez. Uh, I mean, he's got a few removals. Instead, Marco is plenty. He's got plenty of removals, so he can. I, I just want to see. I just want to see a game in which we get, we get to see Mystic Remor on turn one. Yeah, Mystic Remor on turn one is so strong as a play. 
against Alasio uh, Lopez with a, a with a complicated hand, with only one land. He does have a Jitaxan probe. He's got the probe and he's got the control deck mainly. And he's got and he's got a Mystic Primer as well. So he will start with probably a probe. So we have a first semi-finalist that is Neil Steam with Mud. I predicted him as the winner of this tournament and he, and he managed to win uh, in the quarterfinals. So Neil Steam is the first semi-finalist of a vintage tournament main event. I think Lopez is basically doing the same mistake Rocchetti did in the first game, in the second game. I mean, he just kept a shaky hand, mm -hmm. just not to Maligan down to six. Yeah, mm, there's a, uh, there's this thing in vintage when you play a control deck. You think that you, if you mulligan, you will are already a card ahead, and if you're on the on the play, there are two cards, and these two yeah. two if it to recover. Now we draw draw a land, and he's got immediately a sword to plosher. Well, you got lucky that just threw a fetch. I mean, it's the same thing that happened before with Rocchetti. I mean, just keeping a one lander and just getting immediately a second one. Yeah. Also, also he decides not to fetch. Oh, yeah, he does fetch now for Volcanic Island just to um, get access to a, a red elemental blast or yeah. a pyroblast. Yeah. And he can also probe now if, he got, if he's got a probe. Uh, uh, no, no, he doesn't play the probes. Uh, probably he's got uh, the possibility now. Okay, he's dropped the Remoran. Obviously, as, as, as we've seen before, he decided not to play Mr. Remoran on turn one, obviously. Um, because it, it will last only one turn. Now he to draw the second land, he can easily... He just buy, buys him tempo. I mean, Rocchetti now... A pyromancer. He's, he's dropping a pyromancer. I mean, you are allowed to play creature spells under Remora. And he drops two creatures. That's yeah. that's probably the best way of uh, dealing of with Mystic, Mystic Remora. Just, yeah. you know, dropping creatures on the board. Yeah, and now, as we said, this is a plan, Rocchetti... Wow. Had, had <laughs> yeah, another land. This is a plan that Rocchetti he get, get to do in all the free games. Instead, he's, he's doing it only in this game. Playing creatures and the Pyroblast from... Alasio Lopez. Now the the, inter the interaction uh, between uh, the Pyromancer and the Remora is quite interesting. I mean, you obviously want to maximize your Pyromancer's ability, but you have to wait for the Remora to leave the board before you can actually start in playing spells. Yeah, because otherwise you give cards to Alasio Lopez. And Rocchetti now doing the aggro, finally. And now it will maintain the Remora to two, using, I think, he, he will he will hope to to to, to top deck as well to Plosher, I think. So we'll probably tap the two volcanic islands. If I am him. Also I think he has a gush in hand. Yeah. No, he does He's have got a snapcaster mage. Yeah, he, he does have a gush in hand. He so he, he obviously he land. obviously wants to, you know, keep developing his mana, but at some point he can just, you know, try and get a gush. Yeah, you see how powerful it is Mystic Remora in a mirror match of control decks. It gives you access to if he draws a soaring is kind of god. I, I wonder why he doesn't play a Snapcaster Mage killing the Pyromancer. Yeah, that's something I would definitely do. I mean yeah. on on Rocket's attack now, he could have just dropped a Pyromancer and block. Yeah. Uh, uh, just, just drop a snapcaster and block. Absolutely. <coughs> it seemed like a really good trade. Especially because it, it does have a treasure cruise in hand. I mean, what you want to do when you're facing a Pyromancer now is just basically just dropping your um, Snapcaster Mage and offer the trade. Yeah. If, if your opponent wants to just kill your Pyromancer, you it's okay. basically it's, it's, it's two for one. Yeah. You're just gonna get your Pyromancer traded and draw one card in the process. Yeah, absolutely. Even because there's nothing you can flashback that you want to flashback in that graveyard, you got only one Pure Blast. I mean, nothing that you, nothing to worry about. And now another Pyromancer hits the board, and now it's a problem for Lopez because he didn't. 
He's basically getting locked by his own Raymora now. I yeah. mean, he has to top four. You know, he's not very likely to draw another land. I mean, he will have to stop drawing lands eventually. And upkeep with the Remora on the stack, he just decides to play um, to play a Snapcaster Mage targeting Swords and Plowshares. Yeah. To be honest, at this point, I kind of like this play because obviously he's still covered by the Remora. He's trying mm -hmm. to win a counter mm -hmm. war. He will also play Gush, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not a bad. It's yeah, not a bad play. This is not a bad play. I mean, Mystic Remora is ready to read to leave the. Um, Okay, mental misstep. So he actually is actually trying uh, drawing one from Remora. So he, he would have drawn another land, and always in response, he gushes as well. Yeah, it's not a bad play here. Ooh. He has drawn a second source of pleasures. <laughs> Strong. This is a powerful, powerful top deck as well. Also, like. With the Remora and uh, all these cards going into the graveyard, he will be able to play a treasure cross this turn. Yeah. Yeah, strong play. Yeah, because he, he will draw for the turn. That's five cards with the Remora. Draw one, play the Mox, play the Fetchland, and he does have enough co enough, enough cards to play um, to play treasure cross. Yeah, he's definitely... Uh, he's got the Mox also. He's definitely ahead as cards advantage. Yeah, that, 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 that's good. That's uh, that's a, uh, a play I like. I mean, he can he can fetch away. He can play a second gush if he wants to, uh, and then just play treasure cruise with uh, tapping two manas. Actually, only let's one see, mana. Let's see. Uh, uh, the Mystic Remora is showing all his power in this game. I mean, he kept the opponent locked for three turns. And then, with his Snapcaster Mage on the Plowshares, he cannot simply, uh, okay, let's do a counter war. I draw one card every f every time you do a counter on me. If you're him now, do you actually just float one blue mana for the island uh, and get an island and a thunder in your hand and just do gush first? Because that, that's no, what, what I will I will d I will definitely treasure cruise now. Yeah, it, it, it does the gush if, actually because um, obviously that helps him out with the with the. Uh, the amount of guys. Mm -hmm. And he found a force of will and, and a, a dig through time. And a dig through time. He's getting in Yeah, he's getting he's in getting back into the game. Back um, into the game. The thing is he does not have any sweepers. He doesn't have a Wrath of God effect. He doesn't have balance or a um he you doesn't know, a have strong closet. sweepers. As we said at the beginning of the three games, he doesn't have real sweepers for creatures. He's got only two sword to plosher. He's got I don't know if he's uh, if he boarded in the sudden shock. I think so. Yeah, I would I would say he did board in sudden yeah. shock. I hope so. I hope for him that he draws one now so he can yeah. use a pure mass. One, two, uh, three cards. He's got a misdirection. He's got a ponder. He's got a sincere divining top. He's got plenty of drawing cards. And now a ponder is he wants to find Mox uh, a Jace and a land. Uh, he wants to he find. He's probably just gonna keep that mox on top and just draw the mox and play the the sensation yeah. on top and say go. My my sensation if he will try to. Actually, no, no, he's sensation. get he's get he's getting greedy. I mean, he's is uh, he's now actually very low on mana. I mean, he only has three manas on the board. Yeah, I would keep. I will draw the mox or uh, the, uh, the red mox and play the jays the turn next the next turn. He draw another dig. Don't like the, at all this play. Yeah, I think he got a little bit too greedy here. What he wanted to draw, David? I mean, uh, he's got a mox uh, that he wa uh, he wanted. Uh, he's got a Jace on top. Yeah, you can play. Especially because top. the the problem now is that every spell by Rocket is actually gonna give him one extra one one. And as Lopez does not have a monastery in play at the moment. I mean, these one ones are actually doing a pretty good job in putting his life total and down. It's already at twelve. Uh, yeah. Any plays against the deck with lightning bolts? Yeah, definitely. But a lightning bolt for Rocket now will be a big mistake because he knows when Lopez plays mis misdirection. Preordained by Rocketti, and this is gonna give him an extra token. 
every now everything Rocchetti does. Oh, now we forgot to play the token in play before looking the card of pure name. If now Lopez will say you didn't trigger the pyromancer, Rocchetti will, could say nothing. Because after you, you you draw the cards, you cannot say, ah, oh, well, I was putting uh, the, uh, uh. Oh, I think he actually did. There's a, there's a token. Uh, okay. There. Yeah, there's Sorry. a token signaling two and one. Uh, two are the ones that can actually attack, and one is... Correct, the correct. Yeah. Sorry, miss, miss, I miss what. Now look at the thinking, he's got, a, he's got a mana drain in his hand. He's got a sword brochure, maybe. Yeah, every removal Rocchetti will try to do with Lopez uh, will be a boomerang for him because he's got a mis misdemeanor. Yeah, also, I mean, it is, is in absolutely, he's in absolutely no rush to play any removal spell. Yeah. I mean, he can attack with all the 1-1s. One and mean, now no Rocchetti cor uh, currently is doing the aggro deck with the Alvaro Secrets that come into play and Lopez say, okay, I mean, I would have definitely uh, countered all those secrets. Now the problem with Lopez at E. Lopez is, um, I would say, back against the wall now. I mean, oh, 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 hold oh, on a minute. No, that, that, is, that is a poor play. That is a poor play. That we is a poor seen, play. Yeah. You, saw, you know that a misdirection can come in. And, and this is a big mistake by Rocchetti. It's still an decent advantage. I mean, it still has like but four one ones and a Delver. That but the Pure Monster was essential for the strategy of Rocchetti. And he lost it by a quite... I mean, he's got this direction in hand, but... You have to guess well, it. You, you do know that your opponent is playing misdirection stuff. You don't know it. You yeah. do know. You, you he has, he has no, you don't know it. Yeah, yeah. You don't know it. And he got, he's got seven cards in hand. And, I mean, you have to you have to think that if he's got a misdi misdirection, is a problem for me. For, I mean, for putting away an, a Snapcaster mage that is not influencing you in any yeah. way. I think he has to take the trade here. I think he has to block with the mage. Yeah, he has to block. Definitely. For two reasons. First of all, for the race purposes. And second of all, he also has... Uh, yeah. Uh, and decide to block. Yeah, also he has um, dig through time. 